the students and like being called out by the teacher and if they were being judged like even though they might be friends they would say that I don't want to be in a group project with them because I feel like they're not going to do work. So there's a, a group of three boys who always sit together and they're very friendly with each other and they speak Spanish to each other. Some of the behaviors felt a little threatening to the learning community like can we make work happen when you guys are sitting together and I just started questioning myself on that and I made it my work to try and get to know who they really are and to have conversations with them about both what I wanted to see for the class but to also get their points of view on what they thought was happening. And as I was working on my own implicit bias and the assumptions I was making it became so clear to me how students who are very quiet and get to work right away is how much they also hold in their own minds that's very judgmental of other students in, in a way that doesn't hold very high expectations for their peers. And I found that it came to be my work to help change who they are in each other's eyes. I definitely want to get better at recognizing when I'm making assumptions about my students, always be in a state of questioning. Um, why am I reacting in this way or why do I think this is the best course of action? What do I need to learn to do so that all of my students feel like there's a place here for them? Ms. Griffin, she wouldn't single out um, specific people. She would say in general to the whole class, students like this way better because they weren't being personally pulled over and having their friends like making fun of them. Most of the students, even though in class they act like they don't care, um, they know that in their like in the back of their minds that they have to do it and it's just for their own good. Our school is in the first year of having a race and equity team. That changed a lot of my commitments when we got involved and started doing the training and it sort of puts you into more intentional thoughts about relationships, thinking, learning more about implicit bias. A lot of the things I normally did were things I continue to do, get to know the kids, get to know their families, try and make connections to them personally, what interests them. But I think with the race and equity lens, it became more increasing my ref reflective practice about how I had my room set up, how I set up my lessons, and how I was choosing to reach kids. As a teacher, you make that commitment every year to, to reach every child, but um, to really examine the ways that I was looking at reaching kids. When we read about something, I try to bring in a lot of artifacts or pictures or books related to that. So if children are interested in it, they can continue to look at things. I try to bring in a lot of pictures because we have a fairly substantial ELL population. And we read a book about spiders, for example, and there was a funnel web. Well, do they even know what a funnel is? It's called a funnel web because it looks like a funnel, but here's a funnel. So, and they're like, oh yeah, that's what it looks like. There's assumptions I think that we make that kids will get those things and it's just checking those assumptions all the time. It's hard to constantly be reflective. There's a lot that goes into a teacher's job just being prepared for every day and when you add that, that layer on, it's not just one layer, it's multiple layers of examination because you have to look at all aspects of your practice. I think what I've learned is compassion is a really wonderful tool to have empathy and compassion, then I think it's just really, really taking care of, of children in a way that's, that's, that sort of goes beyond just educating them because there's a lot of protecting that has to go on. Our role is so much more than teaching them to read or teaching them to write better. It's just, it's just connecting in the world better, being safe, you know, having a safe place creating that safe place. It's just a constant process of, of really trying to figure out who each child is and how to connect them to me and to the curriculum and to the school.